Hello, my delicious co-creators. Lilu here. I'm in beautiful Montreal, Quebec, here just before the winter comes. Oh my God. With Francis Gendron, that is actually the founder of this. I mean, you had this crazy, amazing dream to make homes that were, I guess, viable, sustainable, ecologic, uh, and, and help us to you know, you, uh, tell us, give us your vision, because this is quite extraordinary to have you right now and talk about those green homes, greenhouses. Yeah. Uh, and your advice because there is not only the technique that is important but also the, the the attitude that we have to go beyond those challenges in life we have dreams and we want to build those eco village we want to be part of it I mean there is all these things so so just tell us about your vision and, and your background and, and your recommendations yeah, I'm gonna have many questions along yes, the line you. perfect <laughs> sounds great sounds great that's perfect so Right off the bat, like the background comes from, actually maybe some people know about that. It's uh, the earth chip. So I went to Taos, New Mexico, to learn with Michael Reynolds, who is the uh, who's the inventor really of the earth chip, which was invented actually in 1970. So it's been a long time, mm -hmm. and he's been evolving around the idea of an earth chip. The reason why it's called like that is because it's a ship. On the earth mm -hmm. right so it's a ship meaning it doesn't need to be connected to anything it's not depending mm -hmm. on a nuclear nuclear um, uh, power plant or it's not dependent on the water sewage system all these things it's completely autonomous and it deals with all of its own waste mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. it heats itself on its own and all this these things so I went to study with him at the greater world and I was very inspired by what they did there I, I think it was truly amazing and of course Michael Reynolds already had the vision of bringing those homes all over the world and he's working on that uh, and he's been doing a very good job around that because in the past few years that's what he's been doing and uh, and for me my idea was like how do I bring this back all the same philosophy adaptly adapt it slightly so it's um, actually very easy for people to have access to that here in Quebec and of course from here in Quebec I mean all of the places, I start here because that's where I'm from, but then the idea is how do we get that to expand everywhere in North America and Europe where it's a cold, wet climate because that's our biggest difference with Taos, New Mexico. There it's cold, uh, but because they are very high up in the air, New Mexico is actually warm, but where they live, it's actually pretty cold, but it's not wet, it's very dry. They actually live in the desert. So uh, coming back here, that's what I've been doing. I've, I've been researching, studying with some of the best uh, here in Quebec. And we've been working on different models to adapt them truly for uh, this climate. And of course, working a lot on education as well. Because I think once you're educated, there's no way you want something else, mm -hmm. right? Because there's no, there's no downside to it. We've developed models that come like when you pay, you, the, the home itself is worth more money, okay? But per month, you pay less or the same because you've reduced so much your, your cost on electricity, uh, water, all these things. Yeah. That, so even economically, they're better now. Yeah. So, so, but the thing is, you need to educate as many people as possible. Because once you are, then you know you're going to want this kind of homes. But once you don't know, you just think that yeah. it's not available or it's yeah. not possible to do it. There's different kind of homes. I mean, there's the, the, the greenhouses. This is the big yes. one that you're really developing right now and with the training that comes along. But yeah. tell us so we can literally all of us have yeah. and add this. This it, It's nearly the first step, it sounds, because you, you yeah. create also those green homes. But yeah. this greenhouse, yeah. just to have your own vegetables and, uh, and exactly. uh, fruits seems... Uh, seems like something we really long for all of us like uh, we want to eat healthier and healthier and yeah. and local and uh, and have access to it <laughs> and for and for me it's even more than that because it does that for sure but it's quality of life as well just having a greenhouse like when when you have a long winter when you live in a place where it's actually cold a big part of the year to have the option of going there and you know suntan or uh, just play in the dirt or like little kids can, they can swim you know the quality of life of having this summer right next to you every time it's sunny even if it's cold outside is really amazing and of course everything that you mentioned about food and uh, and then making sure it's organic and healthy for you and all those things and and by local i mean you know you get out of your kitchen and you're in the greenhouse right away pretty much so yes that's i think i do think it's one of the really good first step uh, so that's why we created this dvd the greenhouse of the future which is if 
people want a greenhouse that's separated from their home. It's, it's, it's the guide and you have all the plans and all these things so people can actually do it. And we receive a lot of email and pictures from people. Hey, we've built this one here and all these things. So it's really cool. And then, and then the one, the other one that we're working on and try that we keep evolving is, um, the greenhouse of abundance, which is the one that connects to an, a home that's already there or a new home. And the big advantage to that is you don't even have to go outside to go in your greenhouse. So the greenhouse of the future is sometimes better for some homes because not all homes can have that connected to them. They're not made for it. Uh, but so Because what does that involve? Well, it's just like the wall that you connect it to needs to have some materials that will well resist. So some of the older, older home, the connection, it, it's always possible, but sometimes it would cost so much that you would just prefer having it separated. Or let's say if your south wall does not have any door to access the, the greenhouse, you know, so there's some situation where it would cost you so much or you would have to do so many renovation to your home that having it separated it might be better and if you have all the money then you can do it and it's perfect and it works but then but then some home can work very well if they have a south side with a door or maybe a window or something like that that they can just make a little bit bigger and they have an access to their greenhouse directly that means you can be in your kitchen and and you need a tomato you just open the door get your tomato fresh right there you know and and Luc Mildermans the, the guy that we work with because he's been doing this for 35 years designing he's, he's an architect but also worked um, his parents were uh, working on greenhouses all their life so he has both you know the architect aspect and the culture cultural aspect and um, he goes there every morning to just get you know fruits and vegetable for breakfast but also just to relax read the journal in the sun and all these things so yeah quality of life i think is is very important and i think that the greenhouse is an interesting first step because it costs a lot less than a new home or something like that it's a it's an addition to a home that you already have and also another great thing we can do with um with greenhouses is when they are connected to your home you can have um, a thermopump um, I think that's the word also in English but um, I'm not too sure uh, thermo thermopump th thermopump <laughs> thermopump <laughs> something like that and and the, but what it does is it take all of the extra heat and humidity of your greenhouse and transform it into hot water for your home mm. so you can save hundreds of dollars just with that um, and so that can help to pay for pay off for the greenhouse because you you now produce food and hot water in the greenhouse and add mm. massive value to your life so yeah and you can go to cr creating your own home i mean you're explaining everything and i, s I had seen that dvd amazing using tires even to create the home all the way to create eco villages huh? exactly so so some of the courses and the dvd focus really on the greenhouse but somebody that would be very good can learn from those principles and for example somebody that already has a background with regular homes could be like okay so i can take this 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 principle and apply it to my home and it, it will work uh, and then but then we also have courses online that are very specific to home design because it is like when the difference between greenhouse and homes is the amount of money you're going to have to spend for it and so you don't want to do as many mistakes you know what i mean like i think greenhouses is just it's accessible to pretty much everybody that has a little bit of motivation and wants to learn something it's very um, easy to build easy to learn simple with a home, especially if you want it to be very ecological and performant, so it, you don't have a lot of heating cost, uh, you do need to have an expertise that I, I know is not accessible to everybody. Everybody that really wants to, of course, can have it, but it's it's accessible to everybody that's that's a little bit more committed. Yeah. And so that's why I often I, I recommend to people, if it's a home, have the perfor performance aspect of it, like the, the outside, done by a professional, and then work on the inside, personalize it with natural material inside, make it... Uh, really nice mm -hmm. this way and it can be the outside as well yeah and, and and doing this as community because you might we might have somebody in our own community or circle or now with all those social networks and everything find somebody that has this expertise for exactly. heating exactly absolutely so so e effectively if you have somebody around that's amazing uh, so it could be and uh, again with the greenhouses what i really love is I think it's and and we've been an example of that we've done it does like dozens of times where we just Facebook, we do like a Facebook call, who wants to come and help and having, you know, uh, 
dozens and dozens of people sometimes too many and being like oh sorry you cannot come for volunteer because we like we can't manage that many people but helping each other to build a greenhouse so that's really amazing like i said for homes if you have specific people that have a certain amount of expertise then that's great but having like 25 volunteers with no experience to help you build your home might not actually be that helpful because because like i said you just need some some uh, some expertise to do it yeah. well and Echo Village, what do you think about that? Because you're you're building one too. I mean, there's tons of people, um, hundreds and hundreds, that want to create that. So how do you? What is your recommendation for that? That's um, same for me. That's I receive a lot of email, a lot of um, Facebook uh, messages and stuff like on YouTube as well. People want to create an Echo Village and. One of the biggest thing I've learned from going in eco villages, and we have lots of friends who've been uh, in those for you know, 30, 40, 50 years, and I think those are the very impressive ones because it shows that there's a model there that can work. And what I've seen is counterintuitive because uh, one of the first rule is don't necessarily have the intention of doing an eco village. It has to come like naturally. It's like it's it's not the end. It's the result of a certain amount of action. And one of the action is to put one business or opportunity or something that will create abundance. So you, you have to maybe one, two, three, four, five, six people, if you have that many at the beginning, you have to find a way to add value that makes sense with your values uh, to other people. And from that, you'll create abundance, right? And from that, you can create an eco villages. Mm -hmm. and, and like the greater world, Michael Reynolds did not have at the beginning the intention of creating a community. He had the intention of creating autonomous homes. And he started business around that for education and for building them themselves. Mm -hmm. And around that, a lot of people came in and were like, hey, I want to do that. I want to learn that. And I want to live right next to you because why not? And the business was started. And, and then they have the biggest one that's completely autonomous, the one in Quebec here at Amna. Same thing. They have a vision around a school. That's what they wanted, a mm -hmm. school that would be a true um legit, very personalized um, education for their kids. And around that, they were like, well, why not live here and here and be around this? And why not having a, a new company that does something that uh, empowers people and, and the kids, you know, as they grow up, they can find their passion in this. And then now they have, I think, something like 16 different business that the kids from the school, they are very encouraged to become young entrepreneur and start their project, eco project all the time. Mm -hmm. And so all these businesses are on the site. And so hundreds of people live there and create those homes from there. So I think the most impressive um, example are uh, those who started with that. And once it started, and once people start to join, then they're like, okay, so how do we organize it? How do we create a system? So it's fun to live together and we, we help each other and often, when I talk about leadership, because that was my, my thing before, that's what I was doing. Um, I say, if you have good leadership in a group, and it doesn't need to be one leader, each people have their own leadership that they bring to the table. Yeah. One plus one plus one equal five, six, seven, or ten. You know, you have three people, but the result of our interaction, yeah. because there's good leadership there, is eight or ten people what they would have done. And when there's no leadership or no communication or no <laughs> bonding, then it's one plus one plus one equal one. Yeah. You know, the result of the three people working together is less. Yeah. So that's why we have a big impact by just being able to communicate well. And I think leadership is very important, but it's important that it's the best, like the person that does it well in his section. Like, for example, if the person is amazing with the food and things like that, then, then they, she can lead this section. And the other person is very good at, I don't know, another business that they started for clothing, like ethical clothing, like ham clothing, like I have. That's all coming from this eco village. Um, that person leads this project. And so there's no like one leader or they can be uh, that 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 helps. Um, but each person takes their responsibility and help each other. And that's when one plus one plus one equals 15, 20 even. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that's that much. Let's finish by talking about the, the attitude aspect, the psychological aspect, going beyond the difficulties to, to make such a thing happen. Do you have recommendations? Uh, I think for me, the biggest thing for sure was just to find out what are my real priorities and putting them forward. I mean, I think that the biggest problem usually is we take all the little things that are not that important, but you know, somebody says, hey, do you want to do this? Do you uh, want to do this? And then you accept everything that you didn't dream of, but 
it was there so you accept everything and then there's no more time for actually what you wanted to do most yeah. and i think that's one of the big big problem and so if you can i remember being very like like a teenager 14 15 years old people were asking me like, do you want to come play basketball because i love basketball and i was like sometimes yes but sometimes i would say no actually i want to make a vision for what i really want So, and that's an attitude that will allow you to do exactly what you want because you know what you want. <laughs> so you take the time and you're like, okay, what's, what would make the biggest difference for me in my life if I do that? And what would make me very happy? And what are my values also? Like, what do I want to um, contribute to in the world? And once you know that, if you put it in a, as, as your priority, and that even though it pushes you out of your comfort zone, you keep doing it, then, then it's going to work. It will work, <laughs> but uh, but yes, it's not not that easy, and it's it's about identifying the fact that sometimes people offer us things, and and those are great things, yeah. but they're not what we wanted to do most, mm -hmm. and that if we accept too many small things all around, then we just won't have time to do what matters most to us. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Francis, for this video in English, too, because we've yeah. done two parts in French, and yeah. I thought this was good to do it also in English. So thank yeah. you for watching, and you also have all these, uh, um, how do you say, courses, courses online yes, available exactly. in English, too, so that's new, so that's yes. a good news. Absolutely. So Academy Adapt allows you to have all the, the courses, academyadapt.com, and there's also um, uh, the Greenhouse of the Future, so greenhouseofthefuture.com also uh, yeah. has it all. Thank you so much for watching my Dishes Co Creators and you sending you lots of love from beautiful Montreal. Thank Bye -bye. you, Francis. Bye. <laughs>